Welcome back, Commander. This marks the just about halfway point in the campaign for the Allies. We've got a, another action-packed mission, like right from the get-go. While this one, or this level, um, isn't particularly noteworthy, I'd say in, in like the grand scheme of the entire campaign, I feel like this mission and a similar one on the Soviet side were probably my least favorite missions. But uh, sadly, the Soviet one, talking about that one, is going to have to wait for quite some time. I feel like that, like that uh, little gunboat action, kind of shows off just um, the intricacies of torpedoes. Obviously, if you're just like driving your boats towards subs, probably not the best idea. But you know. Like with a lot of missions, there's a multitude of objectives that we have to meet. So it's not just about capturing a radar dome and then moving ahead that way. Also, I don't know how that transport got six units, or sorry, seven units in a transport. Since, as far as I understand it, the hard limit is five. But yeah, speaking of the objectives, um, I really feel like this is a huge improvement over Tiberian Dawn, where you have clear and, like, there's a clear progression between your, excuse me, uh, your objectives. It's not just a destroy everybody, it's capture a radar dome and then destroy everybody, or you know, a couple other things, depending on like, what specifically the map is. And there was a brief glimpse there of the parachute action I was talking about in a previous video. Whereas, there's a weird property with a parachuting unit where it's considered in the air, but also on the ground. I don't know, like, specifically what it's treated as uh, without looking into the rules any file, but it's entirely possible for a tank to crush a parachuting unit, which, again, doesn't make sense. I guess maybe they're working on, like, Doom physics, where, yeah, I am classic Doom, of course, um, but Doom physics where your vehicle is infinitely tall, <laughs> so you hit, like, the hitbox for it. It's weird. And unfortunately, there's more barrels for some people to have to suffer through. Insufficient funds. Unit ready. Yes, sir. Waiting on yes, sir. Yes, sir. I should probably be building power, but again, I feel like the Wars Factory is just like a huge time investment to ever build. If I get to the point where I've already like gotten halfway into its construction, I generally won't do any sort of like cancelling move unless I'm like incredibly desperate. Oh and it seems that I still can't build advanced power plants. That's just about like the one advantage 
that transports have over anything in the water, they're just incredibly fast. So good luck ever trying to stop one from deploying at least one or two units into your base. Or I guess wherever it's trying to go. Oh, and we're introduced to a new vehicle type. So, the Soviet quote-unquote Badger Bomber, it's only called that in the manual and it's never referenced anywhere else as far as I know, is basically that aircraft that flies above and drops paratroopers. However, the Soviets also seem to be able to drop bombs with them. Now, they shouldn't be able to drop two at the same time. To the best of my knowledge, if a superpower is quote-unquote ready to use, you can't, like, store that up and then get multiple uses out of it. Although I will admit that as a kid, I never bothered waiting to see if that was ever a thing. And as an adult now, I just find uses for it. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. Waiting order. Affirmative. Waiting order. Ready. Ready. Acknowledged. Now be acknowledged. Yes, sir. Acknowledged. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Yes, sir. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. Waiting order. Acknowledged. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait. Affirmative. Affirmative. Yes, sir. Acknowledged. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Bugging me that I'm not building that AA gun anywhere. And there's another example of you just happen to do like 10 points of damage too much, so the AI says, screw it, I will sell it. Now that radar dome, it shouldn't ever sell because it's an objective. Um, but I wonder if maybe like a patch ever screwed that up. It'd be kind of funny to, you know, you happen to be playing this level. All of a sudden, the AI just sells its objective, and you happen to lose because of it. Yes, sir. Waiting or yes, sir. And that's kind of why I never really liked this this level in particular as a kid. There's something about having to keep a building like alive. Yes, sir. Acknowledge. Like you do just enough damage. And, like, as a kid, you know, you just don't pay attention to it, or, you know, your base gets airdropped with something, so you focus on something else for half a second, and next thing you know, radar dome's destroyed. Restart nine minutes of gameplay. Yes, sir. And it's not, you know, the biggest time loss in, in the world or anything, but to a kid, that's probably, like, more than annoying. Again, if the AI can't send like a multitude of aircraft to shoot at your base, it'll send a multitude of aircraft to drop stuff that can shoot at your base. I could swear that like it never did this in the past. One thing that um, kind of messes with you as a player, and you don't really like pay attention to it um, without like knowing that it's an actual thing, is that you might think that when I was putting the repair uh, tooltip 
on a bunch of different buildings that they might all be damaged. Um, but realistically, if something loses power, like if you happen to not manage your power correctly and you, you know, you go on low power, it actually does like a point of damage to every building you have. I believe there's a couple exceptions, like power plants might not take that damage, or you know, maybe like silos or something. Um, but the basic point is, is that it kind of fools you if you don't check your buildings. Because you don't know if it's because it's a low power, or if it's because it's actually taking damage. Obviously if the sprite slash model changes, then you know, you know there's something maybe a little bit more serious at hand. Annoyingly, it seems that the, the Soviets get first dibs at this, uh, at the gem field. So, you know, do your best to prevent that, because whereas in Tiberian Dawn, you could only get 700 income from any sort of uh, Tiberian retrieval, uh, gems will give you double that. It's a great way to jumpstart your economy if you need it, but you know, the same applies to your enemy. There's also um, restrictions. I don't believe you can actually forcefully target a mineral field. I could be wrong on that, but um, I, I could swear I tried a couple times and it just never worked. Look at all this income I could have had. I still don't know what the heck is going on with that sub up there. You know, it's so nice never have, having to worry about income. Really, like, the major concern is just whether or not you can have enough ore trucks out there to collect stuff. And then, after that, it becomes a matter of how fast can you actually spend your income. Now, there's a couple hard limits, but uh, we'll see in future videos just how much you can sort of maximize your production. I will say though, there is a, I don't want to say theoretical, but there is a limit to how fast you can build certain items. Oh, and since the AI seems to cheat less when it comes to income and money, it just means that I'm in a way better position these days because, well, I keep destroying their ore trucks. Sure, the same thing could be said for Tiberian Dawn, but it just feels like there's more impact uh, in this game.
Now there's this weird like property um, yes. with only like one building, and I don't recall if this was a thing in the game way back when. Again, probably unpatched because I don't remember ever like downloading patches for this game, um, and I don't recall what version of CDs and whatever I had. But the naval yard that the allies have access to. For whatever reason, like in my version of this game, you can seemingly build it a very far distance away. Oh, and this is why I, I treat parachutes as like being a ground layer thing, because the AA guns don't shoot at the uh, guys parachuting down. But uh, getting back to the naval yard, it just seems like I can build them a ridiculous distance away from the coastline. In a way that um, I don't believe is mimicked by like any other building in this game. That's why I think it it's either a bug or like I could probably look into the rules.ini file, but it just seems very strange. Now, if you happen to find yourself playing Red Alert. Um, it's a good idea to mix up your force when it comes to um, going up against like submarines. I don't because I mean at a certain point I just end up having so much money that I just you know I just max out on things. Um, but having some gunboats with destroyers is is a really good idea, and the main reason is that your gunboat is a faster ship than the destroyer, so it's just easier for it to dodge. Uh, torpedoes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It also comes into contact with enemies much faster, so you can kind of use them to lead, take a couple shots, and act as neat shields. But then again, it's also the same sort of problem that you experience between a medium tank and a light tank, where the medium tank just has so much more health. It, I don't believe it does like a, that much more damage, the medium tank that is, but it's still like for its cost, the HP it gets, the speed it has, it's usually just better to go with medium tanks. There we go. Nice crushing parachuting infantry from below. And here's what I mean, like I don't believe I should be able to build a naval yard that far, but I mean whatever game. Yes sir, yes sir, acknowledge, yes sir, acknowledge, yes sir, acknowledge, yes sir, acknowledge, yes sir, affirmative, affirmative, acknowledge. I don't quite know what the AI was doing here. I figure maybe a submarine had like a move order or something, and then it like lost its target, so it stopped. But then other subs try to move, and they also got stuck. Yes, sir. No, waiting order. No. It's unlikely. It's probably more just like some thing where the AI just had several subs there. Now, like with anything else, uh, the depth charges, quote unquote, that a destroyer shoots out has an accuracy rating. So it is possible that your destroyer won't. Like have an optimized attack every time it shoots. It's a little annoying, to be honest. But it does sort of mitigate the advantage of a destroyer, because again, submarines are the only things that uh, Soviets get. So you kind of have to give them a, a weakness at some point. And besides, if you didn't have something to like make destroyers good, then nobody would ever use them. And here's kind of the example of like why destroyers, in my opinion, are probably the best boat in the game. They do a decent enough damage to subs. If you're good with them, you can kind of micromanage to a point where you avoid a lot of damage. 
and they can hit ground targets with rockets. And the range is, like, particularly good. Sadly, I have a bottleneck of income. It's kind of why, like, it's probably a really good suggestion for new players that as soon as you have at least, like, a good amount of defenses set up, you should probably always run at least, like, two refineries and one extra ore truck. Obviously, if you have the space and there's enough money on the on the map, you, know, you can probably allow yourself to get like three refineries and maybe four ore trucks. Vehicle reporting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like realistically, you can always just stop production or like stop your ore trucks from depositing cash. So that's usually not a worry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Affirmative. If you happen, happen to be stuck on like waiting for minerals to build anything, that's usually where the major problem lies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It also doesn't help that I try not wasting units, and then you know I'm doing a really good job at that by losing a destroyer to a Tesla coil. But, you know, if I can prevent the loss of a major force, like all my tanks, I'd rather go that way. That should fix my issue. Yes, Building. On hold. Now, technically, you don't have to destroy the entire base. You could just, you know, swamp the map with gunboats and destroyers and worry about it that way. The only problem is that, well, I mean, destroyers are still pretty kind of fragile, so... Kind of a James Bond vibe off this song. Shift selecting, selecting a unit sometimes uh, a little harder than it might seem. So technically all we have to do is destroy some sub um, Unfortunately that does require you to build boats at some point. So if you're the kind of player that decides you'd rather never have to touch boats whatsoever, ever, you kind of have to sacrifice that uh, ideal for this mission. At least this mission in particular. There's some others where it's also a benefit to actually have boats. So we can kind of see just how efficient the AI tries to be. In this case, it'll let like an airfield or whatever be blown up. Um, but in a lot of other instances, it'll actually sell a building to get its to get maximum value out of it. Because while it might not have any sort of income at the moment. Being able to sell a building is preferable than losing it outright. The AI sees it, I guess, um, as a better alternative to you know losing a building and then not being able to build a couple addi additional infantry to defend its base with. And sadly, because to the best of my knowledge, the uh, Tesla coils are still powered. It's just not a healthy proposition. Then again, I did just build its construction or destroy its construction yard, so I'm probably good to move in at this point. 
And since I killed all its silos, it doesn't have any cash reserves. It'll have a little bit, but losing that um, those buildings is uh, very destructive. Oh, well, I guess the Tesla coils are still powered. And somehow he's managed to sell enough to actually get his his ore truck back. It doesn't last long. And like a dummy, I've got four thousand dollars in income that I just am not spending right now. Like, I should be building boats and tanks right now. I haven't timed it, but it feels to me like the Tesla coil might just have a faster, slightly faster shooting um, or recharge time than an uh, obelisk of light. Thankfully, like the obelisk of light, it's also rather weak in terms of armor. Something that starts showing up a lot more um, from this video on is that the major difference between Tiberian Dawn, or at least one other major difference between Tiberian Dawn and this level or this game, is that it was suggested in the previous game's manual that building multiples of the same building increased the build rate of a vehicle. At least a vehicle built in that building's like available options. And I think it comes more and more into play just because there's a lot more income now, which means I can actually spend it on novelty items like a third or fourth war factor. It's just not something that you ever really saw with Tiberian Dawn, unless like you mined out half the map and didn't have to worry about the AI in the first place. Also, I don't quite know why it was particularly like interested in selling its barracks off, because AI is kind of screwed now. He doesn't... the only thing he could realistically build, other than the sub-pens that we're still notified of having to destroy, would be dogs, and again, they're never a threat. Like, don't get me wrong, you have a dog, you wouldn't want to send infantry at it, but, you know, they can't attack any buildings, they don't do any damage to vehicles, so what's to really worry about? Oh, I, maybe it's because it has another construction yard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which seems particularly annoying that it has two in this level. It's also interesting to note that the AI doesn't have very much in the way of buildings right now, and yet even three advanced power, uh, power plants don't apparently provide enough uh, power 
for what the AI has. Which just means that um, Tesla coils apparently require a lot more power than you might think. Probably more so than the AA gun. It's probably not, like, possible with just, like, the level of AI available to devs at the time, but it would have been, I guess, a little interesting to see AI, like, sell off structures to repower its base, but I guess maybe the calculation to do so and how it should determine what to sell, probably a little bit too advanced for, you know, 1997. Hell, it probably might not be able to do it now, but then again, I'm not like super big on coding, so. Maybe they should have made the destroyers shoot nuclear dogs. Reporting. I guess I should mention, um, just because it rarely ever comes up, just because you're not usually given the luxury of having it, um, but the multiple building effect um, of having like drastically reduced build times also works with construction yards. So if you ever find yourself with an extra construction yard lying around, or more specifically an MCV, it's probably a really good idea to just drop it somewhere and build. Even if you don't really have a plan for it, the increased speed at which you could build stuff is always a very good plus. Also, I don't know if I ever talked about it, but man, it's nice being able to use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down. Although, like, it constantly messes up, and I think it's just because of the speed that modern mouses can scroll up and down with. I'm probably wrong on that, but it always seems to glitch, like, the bottom of the list. It's still super nice to be able to actually, like, not have to scroll down. Oh, and, you know, having a, a build list that has more than just, like, four items on it. This is a really weird version of Hunt for Red October, by the way. Yes, sir. Unit ready. Mission accomplished.